Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. What's the scariest or most bone-chilling story you've ever heard or been told? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. In 1996, aged 19, I went on an interrail trip around Europe with my then boyfriend. Best trip ever, and it cost peanuts compared to what I spent on holidays now with my two rugrats. Anyway, we were on the Greek island of Corfu. Some ferry routes fell under the interrail system and hired little 50cc mopeds for a couple of days so we could see the island. It was nighttime, about 11.30pm. The sky was very dark due to clouds, and we were heading back to our hotel via a very steep, very bendy mountain road that had cliff drops at the side. Scary enough, but then a truck comes tearing up around a blind bend at us on the wrong side of the road. His lights were full on full beam and dazzled me totally. I tried to pull over so he didn't hit me, but skidded and went straight off the cliff edge at about 30 miles per hour. I have a very strong memory of the sensation of flying and falling with my heartbeat so loudly in my ears that it was deafening. I remember holding my breath the entire time this was happening, but my boyfriend said I was actually screaming at that point. Then it's as if I blacked out and fell asleep, because what seemed like centuries or eons later, I opened my eyes to see nothing but darkness and could hear nothing. At least dying didn't hurt, I thought. Then instantly, oh, I'm still thinking. That's not what I expected. I thought everything would just stop. Maybe it will in a minute. Maybe this is it, and I'm about to go. So I waited and waited. That was the scariest moment ever for me in my whole life. I was just waiting to see what came next, knowing it was inevitable and I could do nothing to change it. Just then, I heard distant yelling in another language and also noticed tiny specks of white light in the ceiling or sky above me. And then I realized I can see stars and street lights by the shore. And the truck driver plus some other guys are yelling in Greek. My boyfriend is screaming my name. I'm alive, and I'm hanging almost upside down, caught by my backpack straps in a tree that is going out of the cliffside. It took a long time for them to get down and rescue me, and the moped shop was very pissed off about the loss of their moped. I haven't been on one since, but only briefly. My family has never been told this story, as they'd probably lock my now 40-year-old self up in the cellar even now, just so I could never do anything stupid again. This happened a month ago when I picked up my sister from a party. I was driving home, and along the way I see this black car doing 15 miles per hour flashing brake lights, turning on the left indicator signal but making a right. Impatient, she decides to illegally cut him off and just go home. But after I did that, he began to speed up and flash his fog lights, signaling me to pull over. I just keep driving out, being crept out. My house was a couple of miles away with lots of turns, but this guy kept tailgating me and pursuing me which was getting pretty scary. I literally drive 50 miles in the radius of maybe 10 miles trying to get him off me. I finally made a left turn where he couldn't follow or risk hitting another car. I quickly pulled over and turned off all my lights, only to see the car slowly drive by as I held my breath, hoping he didn't spot me. After about 15 minutes, I look around and slowly drive home. My sister was drunk and asleep, so she basically didn't even know what had happened. My brother drank a bottle of cologne one time, and when I got home, he was nodding off as if he were on heroin and slurring his words. Then he passed out, and I had to call 911 while my parents laid him down and made sure he was breathing. The paramedics got there, along with a fire truck carrying EMTs and a police officer, and I watched as they carried him down the stairs in a gurney and took him off. My group of friends liked to play this game we called Run. We would play late at night, starting at around 1am, when the streets would be empty, our town's very small. We'd walk down Main Street and stand around outside the post office or grocery store. We'd hang out talking and bullshitting until the local police officer drove by. We'd stand there just long enough for him to see us, and then we'd all scatter and run in different directions. The cop would chase us through town for the rest of the night. As long as we stopped, if he turned his lights and siren on, we wouldn't get into any trouble. We did this all the time. And the cops seemed to enjoy the sport. Sometimes they would even get out of the car and pursue us on foot. 
It was exhilarating and so much fun. Anyway, one night we were playing this game until around 4am. The birds started singing and the sky started turning grey, so we decided to head home. As we were walking along a road parallel to the main highway, we hear this huge boom. We thought a bomb had gone off. We ran as fast as we could to where the sound had come from. We get to the local auto parts store and see that a truck has plowed right into the side of it. There weren't any police or emergency services there yet, and this was before cell phones. So one of my friends sprinted off to the nearest house to call 911, while the rest of us cautiously approached the vehicle to see if the driver was okay. I can't even describe what we saw. It was like the bottom part of this guy stayed sitting in the driver's seat, but his top half had just sort of shifted over to the passenger side. He was in two pieces. I remember how thinking how weird it seemed, but it all looked so normal. I mean, not normal, obviously, but in movies, blood and guts seem a little surreal and stylized, and this was just his mangled body was just sitting there. I'm not sure why it shocked me so much. It's not as if ominous music and mood lighting appear around every dead body in real life. A few seconds later, the tribal police from a casino 40 minutes away pulled up with their sirens blaring. A few minutes after that, the police, ambulances, and fire departments start to arrive. Apparently, this guy had stolen money from the casino. The tribal police had been chasing him, but he ended up getting ahead of them. It had been raining, and there's a decent curve in the road by the auto parts store, and this guy had drifted over to the curb and slammed sideways into the building. The really disturbing part was how the entire freaking town came out to gawk at the accident. It took them hours to get the guy's body out of the vehicle. People were camped out on every lawn and sidewalk, trying to catch a glimpse of the body. At one point, a few volunteers grabbed a bunch of sheets and tarps and holed up around the scene, and then the police and people started going up on rooftops so they could see from above. This guy had died in a really horrific and brutal way, and all the people cared about was seeing his corpse. I mean, that game sounds kind of fun, and the cop sounds super cool, so, uh, you know, a guy being halved is obviously less cool, and nobody wants to see that except your whole town, but anyway, the game sounds cool. It's nice to hear things like that. I once witnessed the aftermath of a bar fight. One small drunk guy kept pushing a large sober guy for no apparent reason. A large guy knocked him out with one punch, but from what I heard, it was a vicious punch. I found the man lying between two pool tables. He had hit his head pretty badly when he fell back. It was bleeding. He was completely out and wouldn't respond to any of my attempts to wake him up as we waited in the ambulance. The way he was breathing was the most disturbing thing I had ever seen. His body was in survival mode to keep his lungs pumping air. It was hard, forceful breathing. Blood was pouring from his mouth because several of his teeth had been knocked out. When EMS finally came and took him away, I couldn't even look at him any longer, just to see someone in such a helpless state. The poor man even pissed himself. I found out later that he had to be flown to a larger hospital because he had bleeding on the brain. But he's apparently recovered and is still up to his old ways. I never want to see someone like that again. I was locked in my room in a mental hospital at the age of 12 after reading a horror story about a scarecrow named Harold. I don't know why, but this story stuck with me for a year afterwards. I could not sleep for a week and a half after. Every night I would cry with my lights on, waiting desperately for morning. Every night I could swear I could see Harold by my window waiting to skin me, hold up my pelt and celebrate like in the story. Creepiest moment? Patrolling an empty warehouse, my radio goes off and it's like a sort of demonic gibberish and the lights shut off. I remember thinking, oh, no, I ain't being in a horror movie tonight. Beelined it for the door. I would have had to leave anyway to use my phone to call in power outage. Later, I figured it was probably an electrical issue of some sort, causing radio interference and a power outage. I worked alone during those hours, so it was not a prank from someone else. My friend's cousin disappeared. That's it. She just disappeared one day without a trace. There were no signs, no clues, and no piece of evidence that would lead them to the kidnapper of this young girl. She wasn't much older than her young teens, if I remember right. That's what makes it scariest, in my opinion. It could have easily been my friend being kidnapped. It could have easily been me. It could have been another girl in another town. It's been at least 10 years of nothing. No one. Still no evidence. She's just gone. Edit for words and add some stuff. 
This happened in Texas, around 7-10 to 10 years ago. It never really made the news, as far as I know. I was told about the disappearance about 5 years ago, and my friend only mentioned her cousin a few times in passing after that. I don't want to reopen any wounds by asking my friend about it, because they were practically sisters from how close they were. Apologies for not being able to provide more information. During Katrina, I lived just outside Jackson, Mississippi. My grandmother and cousin who lived on the coast had come up to stay with us. We figured we'd be fine since no hurricane had done very much that far north. The storm had picked up pretty badly and we were in the carport looking at the pine trees across the street bend. We kept saying how they were about to fall. We went back inside and I started to listen to music on my CD player pretty loud. Out of nowhere, I see something pink and foamy fall from the ceiling and land on my cousin's face. She screams louder than anyone I've ever heard before. I look to my dad and see his mouth, RUN! I get up, look behind me, and see a tree branch not one foot behind where my head had just been sticking through the window. The giant oak tree in our backyard had fallen on our house. The only reason I'm alive is that the trees were forked and fell in just the right way to wedge itself into our chimney. I almost got kidnapped while walking home around 9 p.m. A white van, how fitting, slowly drove behind me, then stopped about 500 feet in front of me, then turned around. I sprinted in the opposite direction, then made as many turns as I could so that it'd be harder to follow me. They chased me for about a block or two, but quickly gave up. That didn't stop me from sprinting the rest of the way home and making sure to stay out of plain view by hiding behind trees while crossing the street if there were any parked cars that could possibly grab me from the sidewalk. It has just been a misunderstanding, and I may not have been in danger, but it still scares me to this day. Snowboarding in Colorado. We were doing laps on this terrain park, and one of the jumps was getting a bit big for the landing, hitting it quite slowly, and you'd end up landing at the very bottom of the landing. My mate and I went over it, and I landed on the flats, the flat area beyond the landing, and when we were on the lift on the way up, maybe 10 meters away from this jump, I pointed it out and said that we shouldn't hit that again because it wasn't safe. Not five seconds later, the skier comes flying down fast, hits the kicker with good speed, clears the landing, clears the flats, and actually lands on the bottom of the next jump kicker. For reference, this isn't small, maybe 10 to 15 meters or so kickers, six of them back to back. He literally lands on almost a perpendicular surface to his direction of movement. What followed was the loudest bone-crunching snap, clean-snapped femur, and this sickening, deathly loud, blood-curdling scream. We watched from about 15 meters away, able to do absolutely nothing. By the time we got to the top, we notified Ski Patrol of the incident, and by the time we got to him, he was being helped by other terrain park enthusiasts, still screaming. The scariest moment was probably when I fell asleep at the wheel as I was driving home from my ex's house. I'd pick her up from work on the weekend, and then we'd go out, but she's usually have to be home around 2 to 3 a.m. This one night, I was already really tired because I'd been up since 6 a.m., but I had to drive her home or she'd be in trouble with her parents. I was struggling to stay awake on the drive, 20 minutes each way, but she was still awake and she'd talk to me to keep me up. After I dropped her off, she told me to drive safely, to pull off if I can't make it home, and to call her when I'm home safely. I'm about 10 minutes away from my house, when it gets to the point where I'm only able to keep my eyes half open at best. I smack myself in the face a few times to wake myself up, and continue the drive home since I'm so close. I'm sitting there occasionally smacking myself while driving home when I realize that I somehow ended up doing a really shitty parallel parking job on the main street. I had no recollection of driving to the street. It was several blocks past where I'd normally turn to go home, or how I even managed to park the car. It honestly scared the shit out of me because I was so fatigued that I basically drove in autopilot mode at 3am with no other cars on the road. I have little memory of anything after I dropped off my ex. I decided right then and there that it'd just be sending her a quick text, saying that I'm just going to take a nap in my car. I didn't wake up until 9 a.m. the next morning, and the only reason I was up was the police officer who knocked on my window to check on me. When I was younger, me and the neighborhood boys were on a tree climbing kick. Big or small, we would get together and climb trees around the area. Well, when my mom found out about it, she forbade it and told me I was going to hurt myself doing it. 
Being a kid, I naturally ignored her, thinking that if I was careful, I could never hurt myself. I remember one day me and the boys got together and started climbing my friend's huge oak in his backyard. I had climbed it many times before, and it was my favorite because it overlooked his two-story house. What made this day different was that it had rained only hours before, so the branches were wet. I had made it all the way to the top before turning to climb back down to my friends at the bottom when I lost my footing and fell. It all happened so fast, there was literally no time for me to be scared. I fell from the top of the tree head first and missed almost every branch on the way down until the very last branch six feet away from the ground. My legs had buckled as I was falling and I caught myself in the very last branch, hanging there upside down staring at the ground below. I just thought to myself, holy shit, as all the adrenaline hit me. I'm still convinced I would have died or broken my neck that day, which I did break three years later, but that's another story. I broke my neck in sixth grade gym class. It was gymnastics unit in class, and I was doing a handstand while my friend held me for support. Since I was the chunkier kid, there was already a lot of pressure on my neck, but my friend thought it would be funny to push me during the already agonizing process. All my weight fell to my neck and I heard three pops. When I got up, my neck was cranked all the way to the left and it wasn't budging. Surprisingly enough, it didn't hurt badly and I kind of stumbled around in confusion. My gym coach approached me and asked me to do a forward roll. I complained about my neck, but he was persistent. Thankfully, the female gym coach recognized something might not be right and told me to sit down. Class ended and the pain started. When I started crying in reading class, my teacher immediately sent me to the nurse and an ambulance was called due to the severity of the neck injuries. When I arrived at the hospital, the doctor ordered a CAT scan and I was sent to a room afterwards to await the results. I'll never forget my mom breaking down and crying when the doctor walked in and depressingly told us I had a subluxation of my C1 and C2 vertebrae, a hairline fracture on my C1 vertebrae, and almost all my ligaments in my neck were torn. When my mom started sobbing, I remember things suddenly becoming so real. Surgery would be risky, and I had a chance of never waking or walking again. Luckily, I had the best doctor in the world. He decided against surgery, and instead put me in traction, where they screw giant-ass screws into my head while I was awake and attach a weight to the back of it. The process lifted my head back into place, and I was in the hospital for a little under a week. Miraculously, I recovered rather quickly with little to no side effects. They had me in a brace for six months to heal the fractured end ligaments. Rehab was a bitch, but I can proudly say I have full movement in my neck ten years later. The doctor said that if I had gone that forward roll like the coach wanted, I would have been paralyzed for the rest of my life. Thank God I spoke up.